Hello and welcome to this training session on vessel modeling in Autopipe. This picture shows a typical nozzle and vessel configuration showing the pressure thrust acting on the nozzle and the interconnecting pipework. P is the internal design or operating temperature of the vessel and piping, and A is the inside pipe area of the nozzle. So this pressure thrust of concern acts on the upstream elbow in an outward radial direction from the vessel nozzle. The balancing force acts on the vessel wall opposite to the nozzle, as shown in this figure. And it's assumed that this balancing force that acts on the vessel is resisted by the vessel support. So we don't consider this in, in our load evaluation. The load on the nozzle and vessel junction, F1, will be a function of the stiffness between the vessel anchor and load, including the nozzle flexibilities and the stiffness of the piping system acting in the X direction upstream of the thrust load. The force F is in equilibrium with the two spring forces, F1 and F2. The spring forces are dependent on the spring stiffness and displacement. And we can add them together to get the total force. Since displacement one and displacement two will be equal, we can denote it by a single variable and solve for F. And if we solve for the delta, we can get this equation. Now, if we take this delta and substitute it back into equation one, the pressure thrust load on the vessel nozzle junction is shown here. If the piping system on the other side of the applied load of spring two is stiff due to an anchor, for example, then the majority of the pressure thrust will be absorbed by the anchor. So the nozzle will experience very little direct axial stress. And this can be seen from this equation. A greater K2 stiffness will result in a lower thrust force, F1. So in this case, it would be conservative to include all of the pressure thrust in our analysis. But if the piping shown by spring two is flexible, maybe there's expansion loops, or it's a small diameter pipe with bends, then the nozzle will see more of the force due to the pressure thrust. So it would be appropriate to analyze the local vessel and nozzle stresses due to most of this pressure thrust load. So in this course, we'll look at two methods for modeling vessels in auto pipe. First, modeling a vessel as an anchor, and second, modeling a vessel as an equivalent pipe. When modeling the vessel as an anchor, the first step is to model the nozzle as accurately as possible. If it's a flanged nozzle, model the mating flanges correctly, and then model the protruding length of the nozzle with a small pipe run. When modeling the nozzle, the length between the nozzle flange and vessel wall should be modeled as a pipe element in auto pipe. The nozzle element should just be a very short section. The shorter it is, the more accurate, and it should be centered at the wall of the shell since it's meant to model the bending flexibility of the shell wall. So the best way to model the nozzle flexibility element is to start it at the outer face of the vessel and end it at the inner face. Therefore, the total length will then be the vessel thickness. We can use the nozzle element in auto pipe to estimate the flexibility of the vessel wall. If we assumed a rigid nozzle, this attracts too large of reaction forces to this point, and it's too conservative for vessel design. So we have this nozzle flexibility element that makes it easy to estimate the shell flexibility using several methods. For cylindrical vessels, the WRC 297 and Bijlard are the preferred methods. For cylindrical tanks with large diameters, the API 650 method is preferred. For reduced T branches, the ASME class one piping formula is appropriate. And for nozzles on spherical or torus spherical heads, the spherical method is most appropriate. And this is based on Bijlard and is also a part of the BD5500 British piping code. All of these methods are available in the nozzle dialog box. The nozzle element is really a modified and simplified expansion joint element. While the expansion joint element has six stiffnesses, the nozzle element only has three. The three stiffnesses are radial, circumferential bending, and longitudinal bending. The two shear stiffnesses and the torsion stiffness, which are in the expansion joint component, are not applied to the nozzle component. Also for the nozzle component, the radial load due to pressure is not added, as in the case of the expansion joint. The radial pressure thrust can be added automatically in auto pipe nozzle, when calculating your nozzle stresses if you choose to do so. 
Autopipe is not going to calculate stresses in the nozzle or in the connected vessel, so it's recommended that the anchor reaction forces that are calculated in Autopipe be used in Autopipe nozzle for evaluating your nozzles, as well as your vessel or shell stresses per the applicable codes. And Autopipe can transmit these forces directly to Autopipe nozzle to minimize errors. It can also transmit these forces directly to Autopipe vessel if you're doing your vessel design and analysis in that product. After modeling the nozzle element, the piping still needs to be supported. And so this is done with an anchor. The connection to the vessel at this point will move due to thermal growth in the vessel, and this can be specified as thermal anchor movements in the anchor dialog box. The report anchor results to autopipe nozzle or autopipe vessel option can be checked on in order to automatically export these loads at this point to either program. Due to thermal expansion, thermal movements along the length of the vessel will be different considering the distance of each point on the vessel with respect to the vessel anchor. The connected piping in our example is supported back to the vessel. So to include thermal expansion effects of the vessel on each pipe support, imposed displacements are applied to each support in our model. After the model is analyzed, notice that the nozzle movements due to thermal growth of the vessel that have been specified as thermal anchor movements can be seen in the displacement report in load case T1 at anchor point A11. So there are a few pros for this method. It's very easy to model and the nozzle loads can transfer directly to autopipe nozzle for the analysis of the local shell stresses or autopipe vessel to include the local nozzle loads in the vessel analysis. But there are also some cons. It's hard to accurately predict movements due to loads other than gravity and temperature, such as wind or seismic. So for any models including occasional load cases, you really shouldn't use this method. And this method also produces a much stiffer system, which can affect the dynamic results. So if you're also running dynamic analysis, this might not be the best method to use. Let's go to our workbook example to go through method one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.